guys, today is a pretty chill, rainy day. I started off by just kind of working on the harness. I'm trying to get the pieces that you can actually see and the pieces that you can't see wrapped up with fresh electrical tape just to make it look a little bit nicer and not like flake away like the old stuff is. Um, I'm also using some of the wiring covering, wrapping over the wiring to make it look nice. It's all just kind of being held there temporarily until I get the harness in so I know how I want it to actually be oriented. But I ran out of electrical tape, so that's gonna be on hold. While I'm doing this, Alberto is cutting up my old turbo and the new turbo to weld the 90 degree flange on it from this one and then is going to be modifying the downpipe. Hopefully I can get it cut because you have an old bike that's all like dull. Interesting side by side comparison of the two turbos. It's kind of funny how we like made this to have this flange and then they're like, whoa, that was a great idea. We'll make one the same way. In theory though, the new one should flow much better because it doesn't have as drastic of a step down like we, or I should say, Alberto had to make. Theirs is just nice and smooth and lets all the exhaust gases flow right up in there. Where this point was probably something where it channels all the gas down and definitely not as efficient as this. My MPC Motorsport hardware kit came in the mail. So while I'm waiting for more electrical tape, I'm gonna start just uh, kind of swapping out some of the bolts for these nice, pretty stainless hardware. These are just extras that I asked for, but what's cool about their stuff is it's all labeled. So you'll know exactly where the bolts go so there's no confusion or using the wrong length bolts for anything. But I've got an RB25 kit in here and then I also have just like bolts for the engine bay and stuff. Nothing like the good old Jimmy Oaks trick for cleaning up headlights. Just shave this black stuff off and it makes it look so much cleaner. Some people will respray more black paint because they think it helps with like light diffusion or whatever, but the reality is the hood covers up this part of the headlight anyway, so you don't have to worry about your light scattering in any weird direction. And these lights suck so much, it's not like you're gonna blind anyone. They're pretty much garbage. But this makes such a big difference, it makes them look so clean. And when they're done, instead of looking all icky like this, they just look nice and pretty like that. I forgot to show you guys the new hardware. Obviously I can't change everything right now because most of the stuff is on the actual RB25, but even just swapping out those bolts that had basically paint over them to uh, the nice stainless hardware looks so much nicer. MPC let me know that they are doing a giveaway on their Instagram, so if you guys want to check it out, it's MPC Motorsport. I think they're giving away a set of drop forks or a hardware kit for your bay. Getting the headlights mounted up give me a better idea of what I can do in terms of cleaning up this wiring back here to make it look nice. A little bit of a bummer, but I'm glad I caught it earlier rather than later. If you guys remember that clip that I literally just showed you, I had the harness running for the headlights and everything down and back here. That's the OEM way that it's supposed to be, but I realized I can actually get the harness through this little hole right in here next to the uh, AC line, and I can run the harness tucked underneath and around the headlight where no one will really see it, and then it'll clean up this whole entire area of the bay, and I can do it over here too, the only thing that kind of sucks is I'm gonna have to remove the harness from above the radiator. Although I guess that isn't the end of the world. But I should be able to bypass this entire area and just run it all through underneath in here. So we went from all that clutter to now look how empty that looks. I just gotta route the harness now. Okay. Kinda tie it up a little bit better underneath here and make sure there's no points that I can rub up on. And then right here it'll just kinda go up through and underneath the radiator support like normal. I know a lot of you guys I keep seeing in the comment section mentioning using white electrical tape. Sounds like it'd be smart and you wouldn't really be able to see the wires or anything, but it would get gross so fast and I guess it deteriorates much faster than the black electrical tape, so that just wouldn't be a good idea. And I think it would look tacky too, but this is gonna help a ton. I'm trying to be really careful with all the fresh new paint, so what I'm doing is using masking tape, putting it all through the holes that I'm running the chassis harness through, that way, no chance of really scratching it, and I can be a lot more aggressive when it comes to pushing those connectors through. I'd say it took about an extra two hours of unnecessary time, but the end result of not having any wires down there anymore looks so much better than it did before. Just so much empty space. And my S13, all the wires in here just like kind of get covered in grossness and just make a mess. And now they're just kind of tucked underneath the headlights, which is nice. So Alberto was able to get the new turbo in, and he actually didn't have to modify the downpipe at all. How'd you do it, Alberto? Auto muscle and maneuvering and stuff. Now, my, my biggest concern, I'm just hoping that the uh, manifold doesn't like hit the downpipe because they're pretty close down there. It shouldn't, but we don't want that to rattle and hopefully there'll be no exhaust leaks, but I'm excited to hear what it sounds like. Are you excited? Rattle, there's no race car. Race cars yeah, rattle. It's two race cars rattle a lot, but anyway, <laughs> that's pretty. Give it a little rev. Similar to the turbo that I had on the 
four. Definitely spools up pretty quick though, because listen, the blow-off valve's going with barely a wrap. That spool down. The same whistle that the Gen 2 had. Sounds very cool. Obviously, since I'm not tuned for this new turbo, we can't really get on it that much. But it does feel like it has a very similar spool to my old setup. If that was similar to this turbo to my old one, I'd probably be fine to do a couple rips, but I don't even want to push it. There's no reason. I'm in no rush, and I can probably get this car tuned next week or the week after. So I'll just kind of chill for now. I love how it sounds, though. Sorry, neighbors. Alberto, good work, sir. I'm excited to get it on the dyno and see what it makes for power. How does it sound? It sounds sick. I mean, it, it sounds like pretty much identical to how it did before, so it's hard to really compare. <laughs> but it's rad. I mean, my Gen 2 sounded sick too. I'm just excited to see like what we can actually push for horsepower wise. Gotta get those VQ coil packs in, but I am in a rush. We're running late as always. So uh, actually tonight, um, we have to fly into Connecticut for my sister's wedding. She's getting married, congratulations. I'll tell you that in person, so don't worry about that. But anyway, um, so there will not be a video tomorrow. We'll be back in town the day after, and then we'll be doing more R32 stuff, and this project should be done that week. We're hoping to get the motor in maybe midweek and start mounting everything up and get it running. So, very exciting. I hope you guys are excited for it. I've really been enjoying this series. I've been enjoying all the hype from you guys. It's really foggy because it's super humid. Super stressed because I'm running super late, but it's okay. All right, guys, thank you so much, and I will see you tomorrow. Oh.